Hey guys, this is just a quick announcement right before you go on to watch the video. So before I made this video, I hadn't seen what other creators were saying on this company. However, after the fact, this was sent to me by those who are in my inner circle who watch other finance YouTubers. And uh, some of the things being said about this company is kind of explicitly stated in this video as to the precautions you have to take. I'm not gonna mention any names because this channel is not really to bash any uh, other creators. Good on them for creating content and trying to deliver value to the world in a free manner. But however, this is kind of a cautionary note to my viewers that when you're watching other finance YouTubers to be very careful as to what they say. I'm not gonna argue from authority in saying that credentials is what they need, but list very, be very careful how they analyze a company because what we're going to see in this video is how publicly available information people miss things, even though it's publicly available and free for everyone to use. And it goes to show sometimes a level of detail that is necessary to actually be successful in investing, to truly understand a business, as Warren Buffett says. Nautilus, the company that you're going to see this video about, has some details in their accounting that if overlooked, may have fooled the average retail investor. Now, those of you who watch this video won't be tricked. You'll see the little, it's not on the management team. It's, it's actually on the retail investor, on, the onus is on us to actually see it because they're doing everything legally. They are providing information publicly and up to date. So you just had to look at certain uh, documents that were probably perhaps more up to date. Uh, so with that being said, I hope you guys enjoy the content and I'll see you guys in the next one. Hey guys, welcome back to the Capital Mindset Show. Uh, today we're doing another subscriber request and this time it's Nautilus. So for those of you who may not know, Nautilus uh, produces equipment for working out and actually we'll jump right into it and we'll take a look at some of the price action that has been experienced by the company as of late and let me tell you right now it's not been good so on a one-year basis if you had accidentally bought here on february 2021 you are down 80 percent unfortunately uh, so let's actually talk about what's going on um, so you may know some of their brands and we'll kind of discuss their brands in the investor presentation but uh, for the most part, you had the COVID surge, right? People working out from home and then this massive run up, right? Congratulations if you had bought there and then you somehow sold at the top. You did very, very well. Uh, this company was priced for bankruptcy. You could argue that it's going to be priced again, once again, for bankruptcy. Uh, the companies that kind of compete with this is you can think of Peloton. Peloton's the fancy schmancy version of this. Uh, with the subscription, but they also do it, by the way. Uh, and Peloton has a um, market cap. Let's see if it, uh, yep, it gives it to me right here. So Peloton's market cap is, um, no, I actually want to go to Peloton, please. Let's go back and then just go Peloton. So we do it in live. And then, yeah, you can kind of see here, the market cap's 10 billion on Peloton. Uh, and then for something like uh, NLS, it's about 178 million US dollars. So much smaller company in market cap basis. Okay, so again, looking at the five year, I'm just trying to describe to you the story thus far. Uh, one year, absolutely punished. Okay, so this is one of those companies that uh, I did say in a previous video, uh, I would be hesitant to talk about micro caps, but in this case, we can talk about this one and kind of learn something from it. Okay, so uh, Nautilus, Let's go over there to their investor presentation and kind of see what they've got going. So remember that this is a sales pitch, okay? I say this every time, just in case, but this is a sales pitch. And if we don't see anything that we like in here, we're probably not gonna find anything that we like in the numbers, okay? So taking a look at what they're trying to say is that they, they're expanding in different parts. And then the former gym goers, right? They're trying to highlight that this is gonna happen, right? I don't know personally if this will happen because I, I still go to the gym. OK, um, I don't like I have a home gym, but I don't like really to work out at home. I will do it out of absolute necessity at times. But uh, it's, it's just not for me personally. Uh, for example, I don't own a Peloton and I don't own actually I, I might own some of their their products, but um, not really um, a treadmill of, of sorts. I'll just run outside. That's how I like it. And then uh, respondents reporting that their work out of home versus the pandemic. All right. Um, 
Okay. So yeah, I guess that that's growing because people are working from home and I guess, yeah, gym memberships are expensive for some people, I guess, but, um, or depending on the gym you go to, I don't know, you know, if people go into Equinox all the time, maybe. <laughs> so then we have net sales of $138 million. So very small company. And this is for Q2. Okay. Not the full year, but small company relative to something like uh, Peloton again in market size, market cap. I should say. And then sales growth, okay, is growing uh, 124%. Cool. Retail sales growth, okay. Everything, direct sales, okay. I'll highlight that as important, okay. Remember, we want to take this seriously and see, can they do it, all right? Uh, so first half of 2022, all right? Remember, that's just happened. That, so that's their fiscal year. So it's not like calendar year. So if you're confused by that, uh, no, they don't mean like right now, they're growing at 215%. That means last year, but that was their physical 2022. Um, so we see uh, operating margins have been going up. So basically what we can see here from this business, it's a lot of good stuff. They're highlighting a lot of good stuff. And I'm going to show you something very interesting, a little bit of a accounting trap that if you're not careful, a lot of people will fall for and have fallen for actually have fallen for. All right. So I'm just going to skip through this stuff and see if there's anything interesting. Okay. Partnerships. Cool. Um, uh, they call it really fit on. Yeah. Fit on. Okay. Fit on. Okay. So content partner. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to see this. Okay. Nothing, nothing. I am actually looking at this, by the way, I'm not just like clicking through. <laughs> uh, I just read fast. Okay. All right. So I'm going to actually stop here for, for this. Okay. And we're just going to move on to the model and start discussing the key points that we can uh, learn. Well, actually, this last part was interesting. So capital expenditures, we want to know that number. So it's not that big relative to um, sales, which is actually interesting. Uh, but again, this is for the second half of 422. So fiscal year 2022. So, eh, you know, not too excited by that. Okay. Uh, okay. So journey members, they want to grow it to that. Okay. So they want to grow that subscription base. All right. So let's take a look at some ratios. And I'll highlight some key things here. So liquidity ratios looks good on this front. The cash ratio, remember, is a very conservative measure. Long-term debt ratio, okay, it's been stable. Long, sorry, total debt ratio has been stable. Long-term debt ratio has come down significantly. Very good. It's a much more healthy balance sheet. Awesome. Long-term debt to capital, awesome. Debt to equity, cool. Everything's getting better there. Now, here's where it's a little bit concerning or starts to be concerning. Gross profit margins are down significantly over the course of these years. Operating margins are up, okay? So they've, they've basically leaned out their operations. That's how you have to read that. Remember, derive a story from the numbers. Don't just let the numbers be stagnant storytellers. You have to derive that. So gross profit margin going down means that they're, they're probably they can't get as much of a premium on their products. A lot of competition. Sometimes that's indicative of that. Operating margins coming is coming up. So they're trying to be, lean out their operations. However, take a look at the years in which it occurred, 2020 and 2021. If you take a look pre-pandemic, they had negative operating margins, not good there, okay? So we wanna see and make sure that they can continue going forward having positive operating margins, very important. Net profit margin, again, the same story, bad before pandemic, very bad right before the pandemic, and then good when the pandemic starts. ROA, ROE, same story, don't really have to cover that too much. So that's the first highlight of being careful, okay? Be careful, all right? Now, taking a look at the earnings quality, good earnings quality, we see when it was bad was 2019. Pandemic happens, now it's good. Awesome, cool. Book value per share, we don't really care about that, but interesting to note that it is below book value. I wanna be very careful when, when uh, we talk about book value because in the book value is going to be included the asset value of a lot of their inventory. What is the value of that inventory if they were to go bankrupt? Will you consider that a safety? I would not, right? So an example would be, let's say Apple says all of their phones are valued at $1,000, right? Hypothetically, Apple goes bankrupt. And then a year goes by, right? Or they only have, you know, the iPhone 13. And a year goes by, are, are the, all the iPhone 13s valued at $1,000 still? On the books, they will be. Maybe they haven't written it down yet, but in the real world, they won't be, right? They won't really sell for $1,000 each. 
uh, they're going to sell for less. And that's not even including the wholesale agreement that they're probably going to have to deal with, which in which they'll sell each phone for less at a wholesale price. But I'm saying the actual value per se at retail probably won't be a thousand dollars. Okay. Because again, technology advances. So inventory, be very careful about that. Okay. So cash conversion cycle, it's gotten better during the pandemic. Uh, and it's returning back to 2018 levels, but it got really bad in 2019. Very interesting to know. All right, so uh, let's take a look at the summer report. Let's plug in our ticker. Okay, whenever it loads, whenever it decides to load. There we go. All right, so according to analysts, this is a tremendous buy, tremendous opportunity, according to the analysts. 118.2% upside potential with a 12.5% price target. That's what you guys uh, want to look at. There it is. And then when we're going to dive deeper and it kind of express my personal opinions, uh, listen here. Okay. <laughs> so the uh, cost of capital, take a look at that. The model is actually picking up a 40, uh, that, that might be an anomaly, but that's not good. <laughs> that's definitely not good. And then dilution accretion, definitely not good. Again, you only pay attention to this metric when we're talking here on the show. And then eventually when the model's out for everyone, only pay attention to that if the company is diluting you. Okay. If the company is diluting you, which it, which it is slightly, but it is, then you pay attention to that. Okay. Then you look at the debt or equity heavy. This is obviously going to be more debt heavy because they're barely diluting you, right? They're barely diluting you. So they're not really getting that from there. So take that with not necessarily saying that they're, they're a lot of debt. It's just between debt or equity they're using more debt, okay? That's what that means. It's not meaning that they have a ton of debt. As we just discussed, they don't. Okay, so the enterprise value in the market cap, we see that it's $178 million market cap, enterprise value of 77. What this tells me is that they have a lot of cash relative to the size of the business. Now, uh, I'll show everyone a little bit of nuance, right? Or the nuance that you can kind of find. So if you go on a free service like Seeking Alpha and you go to their financials, all right, and we go to the balance sheet, all right? This is free. I'm showing you like a walkthrough of how you can get free stuff. Sometimes this is not that accurate. So obviously the best one is always from the company itself, but this is a quick way of you kind of doing a check. All right, so we go to the balance sheet, right? Total cash. Okay, so cool. Look at that. $119 million, okay? Then let's go to the annual. Let's go to the quarterly. We want to make sure. Ah, different story. Very different story. So take a look at this. In March 2021, they had that 100 million. Now they just have 20 million. Not good. Not good at all. So the annual reports are misleading. Oh, you see, <laughs> there's a little trick. So it's not a trick. They're not doing it, right? But you got to be cautious of this. And especially when um, certain creators make a video about a company like this, and then they do a very surface level analysis, uh, you do want to be careful. Um, so something that the, the software will have eventually is, not eventually, upon launch, will have a way to detect these anomalies and then uh, basically highlight them to you. So this part right here, the cash, it has decreased. And it was very quick for me to catch this, right? But I just want to highlight this as a lesson to everyone, right? This is the teaching moment. It's a micro cap, but it's a teaching moment. Be very careful with sometimes when things look really awesome, right? So the enterprise value looks really cool because they have this $100 million in cash. Remember, 100 in $70 million market cap, that brings down the enterprise value a lot because they don't really have any debt. But now the cash is 20 million. Okay, what happened? Okay, so again, free resource. So I'll keep them here to use. Uh, we can see immediately where it kind of happened right here. Look at this increase. Inventory, inventory shot up. So they basically utilized the cash to buy up a ton of inventory. So something occurred uh, some sort of anomaly or something that they're investing in a lot. So they don't have the cash position that they appear to have. Okay. Be very careful. So now the story kind of changes. Cash is down a lot. Okay. So they have $20 million to work with. Will they continue to get more cash flows coming in? Well, if we look at what they're priced for, basically this is what the market is telling you is the risk. Okay. The market is telling you, Hey, 
this is very risky. This is why it's so cheap. And I'm here just trying to highlight that to you guys. Okay. It's not a free money, a free dollar laying on the ground. There are risks associated with this business. And I hope I've been uh, clear enough. All right. In the, uh, so far in this video. So if we discount it at 20%, again, it looks like free money, right? You're, you're basically saying to me, hey, I, I, I can require a 20% rate of return and it's a steal right now. It's such a steal that I can probably even assume some decay. Let's see if, yeah, you can assume a 5% decay for 10 years. Uh, so every year, uh, cash flows are going down by 5% and it's still doing good, okay? So um, that should be kind of like a, not a red flag, but something to highly investigate. And I'm just showing you just the tip of some of the things that are interesting. So again, we we discussed this before when we looked at Smith and Wesson. And Smith and Wesson, the problem with that company was margins are going to normalize. And when margins normalize, oh, you bet yourself that it's it's going to come down. The cash flows are going to come down. Same thing with this. If margins normalize, right, and we return back to normal, right, uh, then things are going to be a little bit more scary for this kind of company. And on top of that, and on top of that we also can see that the cash position isn't what it appears to be on most analysis, right? So it's much lower, right? The cash position than previously thought. This is now a very small company, okay? Um, so they got $20 million to play with. You got to think the cash flows are going to continue. And again, it's priced to basically to die. So Knowing those risks, if you are comfortable with investing, you know, have at it, but you have to be aware of the risks. Personally, for me, I, I'm not investing in this company. I'm aware of its existence. Uh, I understand it's one of these cheap companies, but it could be a value trap. And simply put, it may or may not be a value trap. It's just too complicated for me to, to really wrap my head around the risks. So uh, it's an avoid for me. However, if the risks don't materialize, this could be a very, very, very good investment, okay? But again, highlighting that it is extraordinarily risky. It's extraordinarily risky, okay? Uh, so with that being said, guys, if you guys like the video, like content like this, please feel free to leave a like, share this video if you guys know anyone who's looking into a company like this, or if you see any video that I do in the future that you know someone who's looking at a company like that, feel free to share that video to them. If you think it provides value, of course. If you don't think it provides value, you know, leave it here in the nether and then here it will be. Um, and if you guys have any further requests, go feel free to leave a comment down below and just uh, put a request down there. Again, if it's a micro cap, I'll be hesitant to do it unless there's a specific lesson that we can all learn from it. Um, and otherwise, you know, it, it's good to kind of drive the conversation forward. If you guys have any questions about anything I discussed here, please also feel free to uh, leave a comment down below with that question. I'll try to get back to you in a meaningful time. Uh, you know, I'm trying to balance, you know, making content and also working. So bear with me on that, guys. But thank you guys so much. I love making these videos for you guys. Have a good one. Bye.